Hello and welcome back to another episode of HVAC system design tutorial with the channel of the World of Building Design. So in this tutorial, in continuation of the McQuay uh, dock sizing software introduction, we are continuing on the examples that we provided with the rooftop unit and also the sizing of the dock work for the main dock work trunk and also all the distribution branches. So the idea of this tutorial is to understand the dock pressure drop calculation. There are a variety of sizing this dock work. You can either um, use the equal friction method or other methods like static regain etc. So in this tutorial uh, the focus would be on the equal friction uh, static pressure drop uh, calculation. So why we have to do the static pressure calculation? Because when you size uh, your um, rooftop unit or whatever air distribution unit uh, and specifically its uh, fan motor, you have to understand what's the, what's the maximum static pressure that fan motor can, uh, can overcome to deliver uh, the volume of the air to the space. So that's, that's very uh, important information. I'm just going to show you very quickly um, a catalog from one of the rooftop units. So if you look at this catalog here, I downloaded from Linux, uh, which is a manufacturer of the uh, rooftop units. Here about the blower data, which is the actual uh, fan information. So for their three to four ton unit, this is not relevant to this example that we're looking at. This is just to understand that uh, on the left hand side, this column, this is the external static pressure that this fan motor can overcome. So at different static pressure, as you can see, starting from zero static pressure, meaning that there is no resistance in the dock work for, for the fan to overcome all the way to one inch of water column resistance what is the air can be circulated through this fan. As you can see, uh, the higher the static pressure, the lower the air circulation can be here. So when we size our dock system, we want to remain within the boundary of our fan motor or capacity of our fan motor um, static pressure uh, capacity for delivering the certain amount of air. So if you remember from our previous tutorial, we designed for a space which was 8,310 uh, square feet with eight offices and some other rooms and we did the rule of thumb calculation to come up with the cooling tonnage of every space and then based on that we estimated the total air required. I emphasized in the previous tutorials as well that this is not the formal way of doing this calculation because we need to do the heating and cooling load calculation uh, whether manually or through the relevant softwares to achieve the cooling load. But for the sake of this uh, examples, I did the rule of thumb calculation and based on the cooling required, as you can see in this column, we estimated the air supply required based on 400 CFM per ton of cooling. And then based on that, we started sizing our dock work and remember that uh, as I said there are a variety of parameters you have to consider <clears throat> even if you do equal friction or equal static pressure drop dock sizing calculation you want to check your velocity I want to make sure that my velocity applies with the required noise criteria in different spaces for example if you are in a smaller space like a classroom or somewhere that the noise level is uh, very important and you might want to watch uh, what's the velocity you you get in the dock work with that specific size even if you're sizing your dock work based on 0.1 inch water column per 100 feet of length of dock for equal friction still the velocity might be a lot higher so you want to consider all of this that we will discuss momentarily so we determined the air supply rate i sized my dock work here for offices for different branches as you can see 18 inch round diameter and also the branch velocity is determined as you can see, most of them are below 500 uh, feet per minute, which is uh, creating much lower noise in this space. So there's a combination of um, uh, factors you have to consider. It's not just the velocity. You have to consider the noise level. You have to consider uh, the material waste stage. You don't want to upsize your dock work too much so that so much material to be used to construct the dock work 
and the velocity is too low even though you can go higher than that. So it's a combination of different parameters you have to consider. The unit is delivering 9500 uh, CFM. Going into my table because on the way of your dock for well, first of all, you have to determine your longest run or your critical path in the system. So this is our dock work system and the sizing I put together. So in the next page, as you can see, this red dash line showing the critical path or the longest path or basically to put it in a simple word is the, the path that has the most pressure drop in the entire system. If you take every of these branches from where the air supplied, uh, this run would be the most uh, critical path with the most highest pressure drop. So that's what's going to be the basis of your calculation in the spreadsheet. So on the spreadsheet, I have put all the docks based on their sections and their dock fittings. What we have to do is that we have to, based on equal friction, uh, we have to size our dock work based on um, uh, acceptable velocity range. We can know what our pressure loss would be for that specific dock to run. But in here, because I wanted to use the equal friction, you can, um, you know, you can ignore the effect of the velocity here. We size all of this dock work based on, for example, um, 1000 um, feet per minute velocity at 0.1 inch water column pressure drop across 100 feet of dock work. So what happens there is that you size your dock work with the calculation software. So remember that we talked about the McQuay. So if I have, for example, as you can see here, 40, 750. As you can see, the equivalent diameter it gives me is 25 inch. I can also get the equivalency of 25 inch based on the tables on the ash rate and then size my duct based on this pressure drop. You can see the velocity of air is 1390.6. So the velocity is fairly high. But in the equal friction, you ignore this effect. So you just size everything regardless even if the velocity is higher so as you can see my velocities are all lower so that's why i'm saying for the purpose of this um, equal friction we ignore the effect of velocity in my calculation sheet so if you go this way you can size your dock work and plug in your size of dock in here in this column d when you do that for all of this dock work at different sections going back to different sections as you can see i have eight sections here highlighted so going back onto here, as you can see, I have highlighted the sections. I have highlighted the sections and section one, section two, three, all the way to section seven. So now I would like to, to show you how we do that calculation for the feedings so that we could go over uh, the process with the feeding calculation because ultimately feedings uh, in the equal friction, you can calculate the equivalent uh, length of pressure drop based on the, the benchmark we decided and attribute the equivalency of the length of duct to the fittings for their pressure drop. So that's what I'm going to show you in a moment. Um, so looking at the, um, I wanted to open the file for the plan and show you that on the plan. So looking at this uh, plan, um, I have I have put all of the sections of the dock fork as well as the fitting. So if you look, we have two fitting here for the supply air to the trunk. And then I have this reducers that are similar for fitting three, four, and five. And then I have the other fitting on the side. This is a connection between the rectangular duct and the round duct here. So fitting number six. And then I have a round elbow fitting seven. And then I have a uh, feeding number eight, which is a round transition. Remember that we can do more detail than this um, estimation because all this um, connections to, to the side uh, can be potentially considered. So, and as you can see for the air incoming into the, into the actual uh, trunk, that's the view that you're looking at for the feeding number one and two for the connection so we have two air supply to the main trunk having all of this listed in the actual uh, spreadsheet i have named all of these fittings and then as i said i'm going to use the equivalent friction method uh, for calculation of the air capacity here so 
For the feeding number one and two, it's attributed to feeding type number four A. I'm gonna go to feeding number one and two tab here and show you what feeding I'm specifically talking about. So if you look here, we are looking at the type 4D here and 4A. From this tables below, we can calculate the total of the pressure drop uh, in form of uh, equivalent length of duct. So if you look here, we have 117 because the, the ratio of the um, the ratio of the air supply from the unit into the trunk is half of the total air supply on the side where my cursor is. So we have a half 0.5 as a ratio and then the velocity is below 1200 feet per minute. So I'm going to select 117 here from this. And remember that because we're looking at the pressure drop on the trunk and on the branch side, we calculate this two times. So I'm going to look at the trunk path in here and I'm going to look at this 4A for the actually brand branch path, which is the highlighted red here. So this is the highlighted red, and this is the uh, actually the highlighted red on the trunk side. So I'm going to put this together. So the number 60 from this table and the number 117, and I add that together in my calculation sheet as 177 total equivalent length. Remember when we say total equivalent length, this is equal friction or pressure drop in that specific feeding. So if at 1,000 um, feet per minute with 0.1 inch of water column pressure drop, this is equivalent length pressure drop. It means that you have to multiply this by 0.1 divided by 100. So in that case is 1.7 multiplied by 0.1 and it gives you 0.17 as pressure drop across that feeding alone. I'm going to continue that with all other feedings. If you look um, for other feedings, I have uh, feeding number two. So this, as you can see, this is the feeding number 10B that I dedicate here. It's a transition on the rectangular. We calculate the equivalent length of duct. We do that with the feeding number six, which is uh, transition from a rectangular to a round duct. So I'm going to get that from this table here, as you can see. Because this is going to be very extensive, I'm not going to go in detail in every of this um, details. So you can do that calculation for uh, feeding number seven. I'm going to go back just to show you what the feeding seven is. Looking at here, feeding seven is basically the um, elbow round elbow so this is going to be shown as this number where i have the radius um, to be equal to the diameter of the actual dot fork so i'm going to choose one here and then because it's type 1a my uh, pressure drop would be equivalent to 25 feet of pressure drop so i'm going to plug that in here for feeding number seven. And then for feeding number eight, I have this round transition. So I'm gonna select this table and uh, six is my um, equivalent pressure drop. So going back to the table, now what I do is I have to put together all of my, well actually one more thing I have to do is that when I do this calculation, because all of my uh, tables that you can see here are based on T1350 feet per minute and 0.1 inch water column to form this pressure drops. I have to correct my equivalent length for every of these fittings because my assumption for the design was 1000 feet per minute velocity at 0.1 inch, but all these tables are formed based on a higher velocity, which is 1350 feet per minute. So I have to correct that. And for correcting this, I have to come to this table. So as you can see, if I'm going with something lower than 1000 feet per minute or less than what is that those tables showing, I have to select the right conversion factor. In my case, I have to select 0.44 for, because I used uh, less than a thousand of the feet per minute or velocity of air into the dock fork, I'm gonna select 0.44. 
So then what happens, I'm, I'm multiplying all of this equivalent length for all of these feedings by, by 44. So I decrease the pressure drop um, showing by those tables. After doing that, I put together all of my equivalent lengths, including the fitting and the dock, and I come with a total of 298 feet of dock work. And how I calculate my steady pressure here, I'm just simply multiplying, multiplying this number by 0.1, which is my initial assumption for uh, inch of water column pressure drop across my dock work. Uh, per 100 feet of dock and then divide this number by 100 and I get my pressure drop across the entire dock work including the feeding as 0.3. Uh, I'm gonna, you can run this like a little bit higher to 0.4 say and uh, still for that dock design you are for example within the range for the uh, uh, rooftop units for example that I showed you in the catalog. You can, you can do other methods for this calculation. Instead of doing equivalent length, you can basically calculate the velocity pressure of that specific feedings and also uh, find the uh, coefficient factor for those specific uh, feedings from SMACNA document or from uh, ASHRAE document. And the uh, multiplication of the uh, coefficient factor by the velocity pressure uh, gives you this the pressure drop or head loss in that specific feeding and you can eventually add that to to your uh, system uh, another way of doing it for uh, instead of equal equal friction um, another way is when you size your dock for appropriate velocity you can bring this um, you know calculation sheet up and see what the pressure drop would be but for the actual dock uh, so if I put 79, 79, this is the actual dot 7902, and then I put my uh, size of dot 66 by 26. As you can see, my velocity is 740, almost 5, as I recorded here, 745, which is a good range velocity below 1000. Uh, feet per minute and for this velocity this is your pressure drop per 100 feet so basically you can get this number and multiply by the total length of your duct divided by 100 you get the pressure loss for that piece of duct based on that velocity so you can then sum up all of those um, pressure drop across the duct work plus all of your feeding pressure drop uh, because you know the velocity pressure for the for that feeding and that's calculated from this equation if you remember we discussed about the equation on the sea level you can simply use this equation you divide your uh, velocity on the dock divided by this number to the power of 2 gives you the velocity pressure and velocity pressure multiplied by uh, the, um, the actual dock um, uh, CD factor gives you the pressure drop across that uh, feeding. So I hope this uh, was helpful. If you are interested to to get this calculation sheet, I can send this to you in the, into your email. Please send me an email directly to the building to the word of building design as one word uh, at uh, gmail.com. Uh, if you are interested in this type of tutorials, please uh, sign up in this channel. Uh, subscribe and press the notification button uh, to see the new tutorial as soon as they are posted. Thank you very much for watching.